What's up, everyone? Welcome to the Smoking Tire Podcast. Uh, this episode is brought to you by StockX. And if you love analog cars, there's a good chance you love mechanical watches as well. I know I do. They've got style, performance, and practicality at the center of car and watch culture alike. And our choice for each says something about us, who we are, and what matters to us. Well, we like to think it does at least. And when I'm buying a watch, I like to take ownership of the experience as much as I can, and that's why I love StockX. StockX is the world's first online stock market of things for high demand consumer products, including sneakers, watches, and handbags. StockX connects buyers and sellers using the same methodology as the world's stock markets, an anonymous live bid ask market. All products are physically authenticated by StockX, allowing participants to focus on the transparency of data available, including real-time market pricing, in-depth market analysis, individual portfolio tracking, historical sales, and volume metrics. That means no stressing about shady buyers and sellers, no lengthy descriptions, and no blurry pictures to decipher. All watches are in excellent or better condition. All you have to worry about is finding the watch you want and placing a bid you feel comfortable with. StockX makes buying and selling watches online a lot better. Trust me, give it your try Ooh, give it a try yourself. I forgot how to read there. Give it a try yourself at StockX.com slash smoking. That's StockX.com slash smoking. And now, under the hood, something you got to worry about that you don't think you got to worry about are your belts. That's right. Your belts could be what's holding your engine together. That's my scare tactics right there. But no, for real, belts can dry, they can crack, and in some cars, if that happens, it can cause you big problems. Think about Continental belts. I bet you didn't know they're OE in tens of millions of Chrysler, Dodge, Ford, and GM vehicles that roll off the assembly line. They're also OE, that's original equipment, on the majority of BMWs and Volkswagens sold today. Now, Continental is launching the aftermarket multi-V belt with the OE pedigree. It's their OE technology series, belts that are fanatically engineered for perfect fit, form, and function. And Continental has an OE technology series multi-V belt for 98% of the vehicles on the road in the U.S. and Canada. You get enough surprises working under cars and trucks, a belt should not be one of them. Go with the OE Continental Technology Series multi-V belt, the belt with the OE pedigree. To get the full story, visit oetechnologyseries.com. That's oetechnologyseries.com. All right, on this episode of the Smoking Tire Podcast, we've got uh, an OG in the uh, automotive journalism world, and Mr. Sam Matani is in studio. He has uh, he's been the was the international editor of Road and Track for 22 years. He was on Best Motoring. He's written for car magazines um, all over uh, Japan, Asia, uh, Europe, and America. And uh, he also has been on the other side of the coin uh, doing PR. Uh, so he's seen both sides of that journalist PR thing that I have uh, talked about. And he's got a new book out. He wrote a novel called The Prototype. He's in studio talking about it. It's Sam Matani on the Smoking Tire Podcast. Hello, <laughs> Smoke Guitar Podcast. Hello on a Monday afternoon. What's happening, folks? Welcome live audience with us on this beautiful uh, Monday. I have been uh, global the last 10 days, so this coming week, for those of you who enjoy the Smoke Guitar Podcast live, we got a show a day. We got a show every day this week live if you want to get in on the action. For those not listening live, the, you're going to hear a lot about the car I'm driving this week spread over many weeks. <laughs> Sam Matani in the house. Hello, sir. How you doing? Man? Welcome. We record uh, we record live, and then we, we also have a, a release schedule. So after we do the show live, it goes down and then comes up in a schedule. So if you want to listen like a regular programming, you can do it then, or you can catch it live. It's Like a regular podcast. Yeah, just like a regular podcast. Got it. How are you? Good. Real good. You are uh, an OG legend. You are- uh, I am OG, man. A That's veteran sure. automotive journalist. I'm old. Yeah. yeah, but you wear it well. Thank you very much. Yeah, I got a that Asian thing. Asians you know? are ageless. Exactly, Asians are ageless. You're golden, man. It's yeah, great. Thank you, man. And uh, I we we met. I, I think it's Sema, but I mean, certainly, your name has circled around in the publications that have come across my desk throughout my 
uh, you know, young automotive journalism career. So it's good to hang Thank out you. with you today. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and your name is also. So well, you can't. I'm loud, so you really can't avoid me. That's well, the, that's, that's the thing. It's good. It's <laughs> hey, you're there, man. You have a much more subtle touch. Yeah, I don't know about that, but yeah. and uh, and you're actually in studio pro, pro, uh, promoting your novel, the prototype. Yes, it's which, my debut novel. Thank you for uh, bringing me a copy. You I will it. read it. Uh, available in paperback. We will we'll talk about the book in a minute. But first, cool. like you are, you know, you're pretty legendary in this industry. So I want to like. I don't know about that, but thank you. I don't think you give the yourself words, enough credit. No, the words, the, your, your words are kind. Two words, know. my friend: best motoring. That's You've, you used to watch best motoring. I, okay. I am a ma- not only do I used to watch best motoring. I am like a massive best motoring enthusiast. I think it should be brought back. Mm, I think me too. I think the the fact that like. Maybe you can shed some light on this. Was there a point during the making of Best Motoring that manufacturers were just totally cool with wheel-to-wheel press car racing? <laughs> how uh, you how know does what? that become a the thing? The only reason I think they were cool with it is because of the people driving it. Like Tia Cage, because it was all racing. Because the racing drivers, uh, yeah, uh, you know, and you know, Gans, Gans, you know, who mm-hmm. Mr. You know, Mr. Honda. So, yeah, they uh, because uh, the drivers were so skilled. I think they were okay with it. Never really have I heard of them actually bending one pretty bad. You know what really? I'm saying? Really? Well, I mean, I don't. Like, I can't specifically recall any crashes, but I think there I might have been a little rub in it. Some oh, point. there's some, and yeah, the, a couple of the, uh, the drivers got competitive too. You know, oh you know, yeah, you're blocking. You know, and, and they didn't say it on camera when. The, oh, the there's cam- an off-camera fights. The, yeah, they, they you know they're Japanese, so they're not really fighting, right? Uh-huh. But they're yeah, they they were upset with each other. Are there martial arts battles? Because that's in <laughs> no, my that's head exactly. So, Are there yeah, like no, le- no. there's like leaves going and they fly and? Sh- <laughs> that's my next. That's my next book, man. <laughs> Damn. It's like yeah, it's like a, a a a toge battle that turns into crouching tiger, hidden it's, dragon. It's, that's my next book, fucking man. awesome. There you go. I love that there shit. You go, man. <laughs> that I mean, I'm I that must have been like amazing to watch those those battles though. Oh yeah, but uh, like I said, what was awesome is after they got back in to hear what they're tell- saying to each other. Yeah, when the cameras weren't on them. Yeah, you, you you know there was there was a little there was a little feistiness going on there. I just I love the realness of that show so much like all the there's no there there's not a script as far as i know the guys just are like yelling at each other in the cars and they're just race. it's like a three two one go race absolutely no script That's i was awesome yeah i was fortunate enough to be part of a couple of them and yeah there is no script you yeah. just kind of you know show, take, show, show take up race drift, cars yeah and, you know take the drift king's lead because he's usually kind of hosting right yeah. and yeah you just go with it yeah it was, and it's like it some fun. of them it's like F40 versus Supra, like that's an awesome race. Thank God someone did that. Yeah, that is an awesome race. Yeah, yeah. they got they they had pretty much free reign as far as you know creativity went. So that's so that's what great. made it good. It's too bad it's not around anymore, like you said. I don't think could it ever happen again. I don't think it no, could happen uh, again. Well, of course it can happen again. You know, it's just that they gotta kind of, you know, it was all DVDs, right? And right. then the streaming thing came along, and then that kind, and, you know, and they were a little old school back then. Yeah, and they were kind of reluctant to change. But once you know they start getting used to the new format, so whoever, yeah, yeah, I think it'll I catch think, up eventually. I, I think I think someone could come along and recreate that. You know, someone who I, I think there's a, a unique opportunity for anyone that has an audience that is conditioned to pay for their product. Yeah, if you mm. built a business on selling DVDs, yeah. you could probably go to video on demand and bypass, you know, like right normal YouTube entirely. Yeah, because you're on. I, I bought the DVDs and like I'd pay to watch an hour streaming, you know, best motoring special in a foreign yeah. language too. I don't care. Cause you're, you're, cause you're, reading, made, you're reading the subtitles, right? Well, my 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 idea. You're reading the subtitles, and you're feeling the energy and of the you know the driving yeah. and the screaming. And I always thought <laughs> it would be funny to have. Uh, to remake it and have English with English with incorrect English subtitles, <laughs> like have like, like I don't know, like Welsh or like like Irish English or Scottish and get all Scottish well, racing drivers. You can't well, understand well, some of those guys with their hard accents. You probably really need regular English <laughs> yeah. subtitles as they're speaking English. So. Whenever you watch like Duck yeah. Dynasty or something, half the people yeah, are exactly. English with English subtitles. Exactly. Um, so you kind of have 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 spanned the globe in terms of the auto journalism gig. You did the, the oh, internet? you mean writing wise? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was fortunate enough to have a column in Hong Kong. 
uh, have a column in Singapore, have a column in Canada, and of course Japan. I was a regular contributor to a couple of magazines there. So are these columns the all video. in English or are they no, all in local language? They're well, Singapore's English, but uh, Hong Kong, yeah, they translated it into their, you know, into uh-huh. uh, I think what well, Cantonese, Chinese. Um, well, Canada, you know, yeah, I yeah. think it was translated from <laughs> our English to their English. Oh, but, so it's uh, like A. What is A <laughs> translated? Exactly. <laughs> uh, in Japan, uh, some of it they translated for me, but uh, they made me write it in Japanese, which takes about three times longer for yeah. me to write it. You know, but you know, I got it done. So, but you are you are originally from Japan, right? Yeah, so but Japanese your first language? No, well, it was the first language I spoke, but. You know, I mean, I came here when I was two. Okay, so, so yeah, it yeah, didn't take. <laughs> yeah, it did, yeah, yeah, I still speak it, but, you know, it's not my native. Well, yeah. it, when, when I say native, it's not my first language, not yeah. my best language. So to write in Japanese, do you write the thing in English and then translate it into Japanese, or do you actually write it from scratch in Japanese? Um, I did both, but, like, when I write emails, it's straight in Japanese, right? Oh, uh, but, you know, when I need to craft a story, yeah, mm-hmm. it, sometimes I usually kind of outlined it in English and then wrote it in Japanese. Can I ask a really dumb question? Yeah, sure. Different keyboards, same keyboard. Oh uh, no, we use same keyboards. You do? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. All right. And it, and we used uh, um, the um, uh, Roman letters, right? A uh-huh. B C D to write it in. And you just phonetically. Oh really? Yeah, so and then a character comes up that uh, you have spelled out phonetically. That's that's right. And then you pick the right that kanji seems or whatever. Really inefficient. <laughs> is well, that, it, is it? it's. Uh, but I'm used to it now. I know, I mean, right. it's, uh, and I'm. That sounds. I'm sorry if that sounds like racially ignorant or culturally insensitive or something. But that. No, I don't know. That no, seems, it doesn't at all. That no. seems like an, I just. I've never thought about the mechanics of typing. No, it doesn't know. But uh, let me tell you, what's funny about that is since a lot of us, are, we all do word processing, right? Yeah. I mean, we're writing on the keyboards. Mm-hmm. Me especially, but a lot of Japanese people tell me they can't write some of those kanji right letters yeah. by hand anymore because they really? can't remember. They could recognize well, it. Well, if you want to look at my handwriting, it. that's totally fucking believable. <laughs> I used to write good in Actually, school. Actually, that, that looks like kanji. It does. It does. My handwriting is <laughs> awful. You can tell so, what kind of day, what time uh, of day I wrote this. You know, it's yeah. not good. Yeah, I I, I always like uh, the really good Japanese calligraphy. It's, it's oh really, yeah, yeah, really beautiful. yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, that's yeah. an art. Yeah, that's an art yeah. form. I feel like people like good, people, good just Japanese handwriting is good too. We I, we have a guy, I have a guy uh, who's been on the show a couple of times. My friend Carl, who like is the most educated person that I know in mm-hmm. terms of the classics, and his handwriting, no shit, looks like the Declaration of Independence. It's like John so, Hancock, so crazy. Yeah. And he sends me like handwritten letters that it doesn't even look like they're real. It looks like they're made like digitally or something. You sure, it's not a font. It's no. I watched yeah. him do it. We oh, made you did. we made <laughs> him do it. Yeah. Wow. I didn't I'm believe so him. Yeah. So anyway, uh, so when you were, how did you get started in this gig? What is what is the early inspiration for living a life of talking about cars? Uh, well, I was a journalism major in university. Oh, so you were. So you back were. in the day, so I was classically that, trained. Yeah. Well, a lot of well, I get a lot of emails from like you know high school kids and whatever, and they ask me, you know, should I be a journalism major? And I say no because I I don't know a lot of people my age in this job that were journalism majors, but I think that may have been different for. Maybe yeah, the times have changed because yeah. I would probably say yeah, you should you probably okay. go to journalism or, or be a journalism major because you know you learn you you learn how to write you know and you you got to learn how to write before you you know before you take the next step and look Fair. for jobs yeah so so yeah and then what, actually I yeah. suppose there's a there's a there is an asterisk on that it, should I go to be a journalism major question are you already a pretty good writer or not do you need to learn how to write or can you do you have a voice yeah but, well I would for anyone out there who wants to be a uh, automotive writer or magazine writer, I would say yeah, journalism major would be a a, a good a good major. Uh, also, anything in communications, whether it's public relations or even like uh, creative writing. I don't know if I would go the English you know major yeah. up because that's more reading right than probably writing. Reading so, than writing. Yeah. yeah. So, but if you enjoy writing, I say yeah, d- take a major which you're going to enjoy. You know, so that's a good one. Yeah. I went to the photography angle, which helped from a, well, a different angle as well. Yeah. There's so many people who were photographers first, and they mm-hmm. learned how to write, probably like you. And yeah, yeah, they, and they do both. See, I can't do both. I mean, I could take so so good photos, but. You know nothing like some of the stuff you guys. Some write. of the, I you mean, guys, my, I'm not that take. I'm not that great. Although I was trained, but I I hire some truly truly great people that I, that continuously impress me. Even though our little background there, that Hennessy Venom GT picture, that Drew yeah. Phillips, you know Drew Phillips, right? Yeah, yeah, he's yeah. he's awesome. I work with right. him a bunch in the, but um, yeah. So okay, so you advocate for the journalism major. Where'd you go to school? Uh, I went to Cal State Fullerton. 
Oh, nice. So, yeah, so local. Yeah, yeah. yeah. For were, my journalism degree, yeah. Did you, were you at the time into cars? Were you always into cars? Did you fall yeah, into it? No, I, I like cars. I love cars. Uh, my I guess my love affair with cars started probably in elementary school. Uh-huh. And I'm giving away my age here. But Uh-oh. it's probably when uh, the supercars were making the big big hit. So it's Mira? Uh, no, that, I'm not that old, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but close, the uh, Countach. Right? Okay, yeah. Countach, the Ferrari BBs, the Porsche 930 Turbos. That was like kind of the in thing and mm-hmm. i got kind of caught up in that and ever since then you know i was just you know totally into cars you know yeah cutting out pictures putting it on my book and on my folder on my peachy folder yeah, if yeah. anyone remembers what that, those were so yeah. i used to make my mom take me to this gray market dealer in atlanta and and let and the guy would let me sit in the countaches and the diablos and stuff and That's it pretty was, cool, when i was man. like six yeah my mom That's must have cool. been super annoyed by that over and over but i was really about it yeah some That's really awesome. embarrassing pictures of me in spandex shorts Spandex was cool in '91. Don't shit. We need to get these photos. <laughs> I have. I, I'll, I'll. I'll bring one. It's at my house. It's not pretty. It's not. Good. <laughs> um. So okay. Always into cars. Impressed by supercars. And well, then, supercars got me in. Yeah. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. 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 And what about the uh, the other stuff that was happening in the '80s? The the rise of the Japanese imports and stuff like that. Yeah. You know. Um. I think the first Japanese car really. F- Really, really liked. So, of course, the Z car, right? I mean, but yeah. that was in the that was in the you know sixty nine seventy. And then uh, I've always been a Z fan, all e- even through the ugly years, right through the eighties. And then you know they came with the Z thirty two, which is just which is early nineties. I think yeah, it's yeah, a, it's just a badass car. But uh, yeah, the Z, uh, the Supras, you know, the, even the Celicas back then. I thought you know I, I was I liked a lot. Yeah, you know, I tinkered with them, but that's when I found out. I am not good. You're not a wrench. No. Oh, man. welcome to the I'm, club. Me either. I'm, I'm really bad. No. I mean, it's not that I'm. I don't enjoy doing it. I'm really bad at it. I mean, <laughs> freaking, I can't get the screws in right, or yeah. I'll, I'll lose <laughs> shit all over the place. You know, it's, I it's pretty bad. I a hundred percent understand. Yeah, so Me and just, Timmy right here tried to put some Baja bumpers on my Raptor a couple years ago. We succeeded. Yeah, it took 12 hours. Yeah. yeah. Four we, tri- had, we had the wrong drill and the shitty drill <laughs> yeah. bit. Yeah, yeah that's, that's what I'm sticking to. But no physical injuries because I always have No, cuts, I always, I no, always I destroy break myself. a finger or something. Yeah, yeah so. Destroy myself doing so, it. So then I said, hey, maybe I should just concentrate on driving and con- you know, and uh, uh, reading up on them and just being educated about them instead of actually being going out and opening up you know, I am 100% an engine, sympathetic engine block, to you, Sam. So, yeah, yeah, thank you. I'm glad, I'm glad there's no. guys like us out there. Well, you there's, know? You know, there's, there is a faction of people that think... Think if you don't lay under your car for half the weekend, that you're not like a real car guy. And I always defend. No, man, I'm not. Who keeps man. these all these amazing shops that build this crazy shit? Who do you think keeps them fucking open? Yeah, exactly. I'm a customer. Exactly. I keep, I keep the exactly. smart people in business and building cool things. Well, and some of those guys too, the guys who are wretched. And you know, I'm, hopefully, there are not too many out there that take offenses. But dude, they can't drive. And I go. Well, no, some can and some can't. Yeah. Well, some of them really great drivers, you know. Oh, yeah. But some of them, I just go, oh my god. You yeah. Know, you, you might want to. Spend some time behind the wheel than mm-hmm. under the. Under and the just car, because you know. what you have, just because you can turn the wrenches, doesn't mean that what you have built is any good. Yeah, <laughs> there's there, there's, a, there's a big if there. And, so, yeah, and I, you know, I don't see too many of these really, you know, rich car guys kind of doing it on the. You know, they they get no, to a point yeah. where they hire people to do it. Yeah, just that's it's Jay what Leno I and uh, nobody else. I don't even know if Jay Leno does it himself. He's I got a guy he, running in his garage. I feel know. like I, I I have to think he does something. Oh, I'm sure he does, a little. he does. And a little he knows bit. his cars. You know, I spent a whole week with him in Japan. And yeah, really? what did you guys do in Japan? Uh, I was kind of his guide because he had never been to Japan before at that time. So you when know, was I kind this? Of took, so only two years ago. Three oh, years really? Ago? It was, it was right, recent. Well, it was right before he went off air. When is he was still okay. with the Tonight Show? How, uh-huh. how many years ago was that? Uh, I don't know. Three, four yeah, years ago. A few. Yeah, yeah, three, yeah, four years around then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, that was awesome. That was cool. That's I mean, so really fun. got to know him. Yeah, yeah. So you just you, you guided him around the Japanese car culture. Yeah, pretty That's much. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. We, we just hung out. It was good. Yeah. We, was I had I was only in Japan for four days, and it was so awesome. And I wanted to stay so much longer. I can't wait to go back. There was the the just you visually. Only went, you've only been once. Only once. Oh wow. It's That's, very disappointing. But yeah, I drove a, I drove an R thirty four Skyline. I love the, the R, I love the R thirty four. The Hakone Turnpike is that? That's did exactly I pronounce that correctly? Perfectly. Yeah. Fucking awesome. Yeah, what a day! Is, up oh, and down, beautiful. up and down, yeah. up and down, over and over. Just the. Could you best. see Fuji? Mount Fuji. You could. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Cause when it's cloudy, it's cloudy a lot. So there's a uh, there's a place right near there called Fun to Drive. It's a it's a JDM uh, rental. Tim, pull it up. Fun the number two drive, and you can rent some really cool 
JDM fun cars from this place, and that was where I rented the Skyline from. Oh, you rented the Skyline? You yeah. Had, and and Nissan w- didn't get you one for a press car? No, something? they got me a brand new one, oh, which okay. I was not that into, and like an R35, I don't oh, know, the black new R35. Yeah, yeah, this was oh, like, you know, two years ago. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I've oh, only... Oh, wow. That's so cool. There's Fuji go, in the first gen too. replica. Huh? Yeah, go down to the car rent. Go to car rental and look at their fleet. Oh, here, here go down. The fun to drive fleet. So you've got a Z. There's yeah. an old G, an old Skyline, a couple Skylines. There's an R32, right there, the silver one. That's the B, the silver R34. That's the car I drove. Oh, yeah. There you go. Yeah. That was nice. Oh, it's <laughs> so sweet. It's a great car to drive so on the turnpike. So sweet. Absolutely. Oh, so good. Yeah, I love that car too. I think it was. Uh, I don't know the equivalent. I think it was like three hundred dollars a day. All right. Sure. It's great. Yeah. When are you going to drive an R34? In Japan, in Japan. On, at a Hakone Skyline, Skyline yeah. with Fuji, Mount Fuji in the background. That road awesome, is great. Man. It's, a, it's like a little cheap. toll road. It goes up this mountain. There's a little restaurant at the top. Yeah, it is awesome. a little toll road. That's right. Yeah, yeah. beautiful. Yeah. yeah, where where in uh, where in Japan where uh, did you take Jay around to? Uh, let's see. We started in Tokyo, then went to Nissan Yokohama, and then where do we go? I think, and then we went to Fuji Speedway. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So I love that. Country yeah, so much. Very fun. Fun. To, was it just fun2drive.com? Yeah. Fun2drive-japan.com? That's the one. Yeah, yeah. Check that shit out. Um, I didn't even know about that. Yeah. Oh. Now you couldn't tell your... I guess they, they... Oh, they have the calendar up and everything. Yeah, well, it's actually NSX cool. They make you... Year. When you go... Uh, just to make sure you're not like an idiot when you go, there's a really cool guy that runs this place, and he makes you... He it, The place is on like the Toge Road. Mm-hmm. It's off the highway on okay. the side of the mountain. You drive past those like bathhouse places or the um, the hot spring kind yeah, of places, yeah, 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 yeah. and it's up there. And he makes you drive him down the Toge Road to like prove you're not a complete idiot. Oh, that you can he shift. might just make like right. Americans do that, but but I was like heel towing and stuff. He's like, oh, heel towing. I was like, yeah. See, he's like, okay, you're good. Don't worry about it. Oh, awesome. okay. So yeah, gave him he, a little, gave him a little. I gave him off. a little something. Yeah, okay. I gave yeah, him a little something good. to look at. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. So what um what's uh what's been some of your favorite stories to write? You got to go 200 miles an hour in a Suzuki Kazashi at Bonneville. You've had some. Yeah, that's pretty. It's a pretty, pretty awesome crazy, right? one. <laughs> yeah, it's Underrated car, right? The Suzuki Kazashi, actually. It was, but it, yeah, but it, you know, that's not the first car that comes to mind to go 200 miles an hour in. No, but, I you remember know, this it story. was a project. You know, it was a good project car, and it was I a whole spell. project story. So K I Z A S H I, and if you just add Bonneville to it, you'll definitely get the pictures. I remember that story though. With the oh, pig- you did. Oh, I remember the story. Uh, yeah, with the dog dish wheels on it. There, yeah, it, it yeah, was awesome. It. Yeah, that thing was pretty cool looking car. Yeah, it was. Uh, that that's was rad. that was pretty scary, man. That was pretty scary. It was man, pretty scary. But what's it, it like it, to go, what is it like to go two hundred to Bonneville? Um, I guess the first thing you well, the first thing you you really have to deal with is the heat. You know that it's so freaking hot over there, and yeah. not just is it hot. You always have to have the windows up, right? Because the aerodynamics the aero, yeah. or or and you know the you know the uh, the car has been tweaked in such a way that you know you don't have. Uh, uh, the the operation for the things. I mean, the windows are always oh, they're just up. fixed. Yeah, they're fixed yeah, yeah. exactly. So you have to kind of open the door. And the race suit you wear is extra extra thick because, like in a at a racetrack, if you crash, your car comes on fire. Uh, emergency crew will be out there in what oh, five six six yeah, minutes, right? Or whatever miles away. I'm, I could be four or five miles out. Yeah, and it takes them that long to get there, right? So you so need that extra now thick. That brings up an because, interesting point. They don't station any emergency crew. Out. No, no, you uh-huh. don't see them out there. No. Okay, yeah. I mean, there might be an, the odd ambulance, you know, <laughs> maybe at the one yeah, mile, yeah. two mile mark. But yeah, I mean, you don't know where you're, yeah. that you're going to crash. So yeah, so that, so that thing is, you know, that's hot. You're just yeah. boiling. And then the other thing is, you know, once you hit about 150, 160 miles an hour, it you start sliding mm-hmm. because you know you're on salt. It's right. not a pavement, and that gets your attention pretty quick. And then then a gust of wind comes, and you're it's moving you, you know, side, and you got to try to steer that car back yeah. onto the right line. Totally. And you know, you make a little uh, a jerk or anything, you're probably going to be flipping. So and it's still a front wheel drive car. That was yeah. We that had was a front wheel drive yeah, car. Yeah, yeah. we so kept you, the front wheel drive. And it was 800 a, horsepower front yeah. wheel drive. Yeah. Did you yeah. modify the stock engine to 800 yeah. horsepower? Oh yeah, yeah. We do, yeah, yeah. But absolutely. it wasn't a swapped motor, right? It was a stock engine modified. No, I think it's a swap motor. I oh, can't tell you okay. what motor it was, in, but yeah. <laughs> but then there's some. Big old turbos in there, and I think, oh, there you go. Yeah, working I, on two hundred mile an hour. Yeah, and, and you can see I'm not there working. My yeah, there's a there's, there's a guy that's else. definitely not, not you me. putting that exactly. engine. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And then, so wait, uh, when you're going down the salt, is it 
they don't they like paint a, a line in the salt to follow? Nah, there's no, no, there's no line. You just you see some markers on the left and the right. You see a mile marker on the left, and you know, and then uh, that's okay, it. What, yeah, that, and then you're like going cones? Oh my, huh? It's like cones it looks like or yeah, kind of like flags cones. and stuff. Yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. And then the mile marker is a number, right? One, okay. two, three, four, five. And those things come pretty quick, but you know the mile marker between four and five came a little a little less quick because <laughs> you're going, hurry up and get this done with because yeah. I'm going about two hundred miles an hour. If something happens, I'm dead. You yeah. Know? How long do you hold that for? What do you mean? The two one, okay, so you hit two hundred. You're at oh, mile no, you, five. Oh, oh no, you're I, I'm I'm on throttle the whole time. Right, right. But on. where where is the end? Oh, the end I think was mile five. Okay, I think yeah. Was, I so think, you yeah. so you do cross a, a shutdown yes, yes, line and yes. coast it out, and that's no, a, you you pull the shoot. Oh, pull the shoot. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Dude, we're serious here. We don't <laughs> fucking dude. Pulling, if you coast, you're gonna a coast shoot for like another eight miles. Eight that's miles. Okay. Of distance, Nothing man. to hit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Could, pulling a shoot is a dream of mine. I'd like to pull a shoot. Really? Yeah. yeah. yeah it, you could feel the whole chassis go. Oh, I bet yeah, it's gonna yeah, be great. Yeah. Oh, but I, if I may add, I think I'm pretty sure we still have the record for. What was, class. The, what was the class? Like a two-liter uh, or something? It was a two-point... Uh, no, it was a three-liter blown coupe. You know, three so. liters. Oh, and, so and, and our car was 2.4 liters. So It definitely wasn't 2.4 stock. That's no, like a no, 1.8 stock. stock or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, so we're, you know I mean, I'm sure it's That's not going to stand rad, forever dude. because... You know, you could go to three, three point yeah. liters, but you know, we still have the record as far. I it only know. stands forever if you're Bert Monroe. That's right. That yeah. dude still got some records. I know. Yeah, well, <laughs> crazy. He really it's does. Crazy. Crazy. Yeah. So that's awesome, man. Yeah, that was that was uh, that was a memorable. And you know, you Does, have to you have to back it up the next day. You know that, you right? You got to do it twice. Exactly. That's that's the that's the killer. Do they take the average? Yeah, they take the average. Wow. Yeah, and you know, after you do it the first time, you're kind of going, yeah, and then you go, oh my god, because I got to do that Opposite again. wind directions, they run opposite ways. Or no, you just I have think to do you it just again have to do it again. Way. Yeah, no. yeah, I think so. Yeah. No, no freak, uh, no freaks, luck. You know, freak. Yeah, luck exactly, runs. It's like, exactly, okay, must, exactly. So. All records must be repeatable. Yeah, something like that. How scientific of them. Yeah, but you know, once you felt like you survived that first one you yeah. go oh man am i pushing my luck going the second time you know so, i understand yeah, so yeah but it was good we did it we did it. yeah it was two i think we went faster the second time so that's awesome two, yeah 202 204 and then i think we came in at 203 so the average you would so. desire to go back to try something out try no nah, nah, i think i'm good <laughs> that's the one <laughs> yeah, i think i'm good man <laughs> I, i'd really love to do yeah. bonneville i've done like the runway racing stuff and that's mm -hmm. that's that's a riot it's yeah a good time. bonneville it's it, you know it's something you should do once then well, Bonneville, your pictures just look so good. <laughs> you know, it's just the most. It's the most. Um, you, you know that photo, salt, that salt lake bed. Yeah, I mean the, the, the quality yeah. of light. Oh, the you light, know the yeah, clouds, the the reflections. You know, compare that to some fucking shit runway in Coalinga or something. Yeah, you know? or <laughs> some deserted airfield yeah. or something. In you guys Southern are California, on. there's there's nowhere to make a picture look really good. You know, if that no racetracks anyway. Uh, yeah, not Fontana's not really picturesque. Nah, dude, there's yeah. no good photography to be. Oh, well, oh hey, uh, Chuck Laguna Walla. Seca. That's North Southern California. Oh, you said Southern California. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, Chuck, North... Walla, Chuck Walla. Yeah, it's the middle of the desert over there, right? Palm it's Springs. annoying, yeah. but it has a it has a really good sunset, yeah. and they have yellow and black curbing, which looks nice. Oh, that yeah, that's that true. Does. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's different. Yeah. Video, video mind. Yeah, yellow and black yeah. curbing. Yeah. Um, when you are. Uh, what do um, when you're doing stories for uh, for like foreign markets, like for the Asian markets or anything like that? Like, do they have uh, a, a like different sets of uh, requirements for stories, or is it all kind of the same stuff, just translated? No, luckily for me, it was a column, so I kind of had free reign to write what, oh, about whatever great. I wanted, and they kind of wanted me to uh, talk about the U.S. You know, the U.S car industry the car market so it was pretty easy for me yeah so, yeah so i didn't really have to adjust to anyone's style or anything like that yeah. yeah have you been pretty much your entire career been freelance bounce around or have you had a, you've have you had like a have you have you had a long extended period where you had one gig that was road and track road and track much, yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah so yeah, just yeah. for like 20 That's years 22 one years gig. yeah pretty yeah. much that one gig you know, I mean, I did some freelancing on the side mm -hmm. while at Road and Track, as long as it wasn't conflicting. So, right, yeah, right, so right. I did that. But, yeah, but pretty much Road and Track was my one gig. That's, yeah. see, for those of us who, who only have grown up, uh, you know, career-wise on the internet and having to sort of, like, scrap, you know, it's not, there's not a lot of, like, one job sort of uh, gigs anymore. It's, and I'm jealous yeah, that you were able know, to, to uh, pull 20 years out of Road and Track. Things have changed, man. Yeah, it is, but yeah. do you, is that, you know, today are you able to... To adapt to that, or is it is it been well? A no, I pretty much no, no, no struggle at all. I pretty much uh, as soon as my road and track kick was up, mm -hmm. I was already transitioning to another um, field, uh -huh. and which was uh, I started my own 
uh, press writing company, public relations company. Oh, cool. So yeah, I've been doing that since, and then you know that's it's done quite well. Uh-huh. And while uh, that was going on, I had time to go back to school. Uh, this time went to UCLA uh-huh. uh, to, to get my screenwriting. Uh, certification, my novel writing classes, all that stuff to get, you know, because I wanted to get into creative writing because it's always something I wanted to do for yeah, you know, yeah. a long time. And uh, uh, and then I decided, hey, I, you know, my professor says, hey, you know, I think you can really go with this book, this, you know, your your project here and you should pursue it. So I did. And yeah, I got it published. I do want to talk about that. But real yeah. before we get to the no, no time, I do, it's anything. interesting because a lot of people uh work on both sides of the automotive journalism coin they they've bounced mean? well the pr mm-hmm. the press you know the press ver- the P- public relations version and then the auto journalism version mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. you know uh frank at porsche uh has worked in p in in pr and been an automotive journalist and like calvin kim has gone back and forth and other people mm-hmm. who either start as a journalist and end up working in pr or start as pr mm-hmm. and end up jumping ships i just think it's funny to see people who go to both sides i yeah and you know and it's always been you know there's they said there's a really thick line between the two you're either one you're, you know you're either a slack I, or a I, hack i don't think it's that thick man i don't think it's that thick <laughs> anymore either so, no yeah so. because i think the 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 pr people i think do um generally love cars mm-hmm and I think they're generally, you know, very knowledgeable and and passionate. At right. least the the younger ones that I tend to hang out with, and um, I think it's not uncommon that they either wanted they they wanted to do the journalism thing and then realized how much more money they could make it's always, putting on yeah. the suit, you know, yeah. or or whatever, and the vice versa. They see yeah. how much fun the other guys are having. So, totally. Okay, I could take a cut and pay. I'd rather do that. Right. Yeah. So. yeah. If you're wearing the, the yeah. Porsche name tag, you don't get the full open bar experience. Right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So what are, uh, you know, if you look back, what are some of your uh, most memorable, like press trips to crazy places around the world to drive new stuff? Do you have, does anything really stand well, out? Well, the ones that really stand out aren't, aren't really the press trips or like the press drives. No, it's I like, don't, yeah. Or, you know, go like, ahead. Where, yeah. wherever, wherever that question leads you. Well, the Dakar Rally, which yes. I ran in 96, I think, 95, 96. That was pretty crazy do tell driving what uh, it was a nissan safari and we did is we, that like a patrol what is this what's this yes, not, yes it is a that's patrol. exactly okay it, yeah. cool so yeah, that was okay. the european name of the nissan safari the patrol, oh right. yeah yeah uh or vice versa or but uh yeah same car and uh uh yeah our, it didn't look like that that one actually <laughs> no. tim pull that pic- so pull that picture up because that one um, that exact vehicle, which I guess was on Bring a Trailer recently, uh, was just at Radwood, Atlanta, where I just was. I just saw that thing in person. It's a Nissan Patrol fire truck, and it's fucking awesome. It is pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, you know, it looks like a like a Mattel, you know, totally cars, you toy know? truck. Can you click yeah. on the actual link and see what that sold for? Out of curiosity, not the picture, the 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 link itself. I'm curious at the sale price. Ninety one hundred bucks. Wow, that is so cool for ninety one hundred bucks. Yeah. Yeah. Good deal, man. Yeah. yeah, that's so awesome. Especially you get the light, you know, the lights and everything. It's, and the it's little, like got the high roof. It yeah. is ready to go. That yeah. thing out. Man. It's a fire engine. It's a. It's an actual yeah. fire engine. That's cool. So, anyways, a, a car that's yeah. similar to that we we drove. So we. That's so cool. Yeah. How long cool. is the race? It's about three and a half weeks. Weeks. Yeah, we had about th- we had three people perish. You know and. Yeah, it was, really? it was, yeah, it was pretty, it was pretty gnarly. But uh, you know, we lived, even though I've, I almost, <laughs> like, I almost died. How so, did you almost die? Uh, we were about a hundred miles off course because you know those were back in the days when we didn't have in car navs. Yeah. right? we were doing things by paper, and we were, I think, in Mauritania, and we were not, not in the place we we're supposed to be. So there's, uh, there was this uh, military post. That was flagging us down, telling oh us God. to stop. Yeah, and I, I was navigating at that point because you know we switched because mm-hmm. you know we were having twelve hour, thirteen, fourteen hour days, you know, out there in the desert. And I told him, don't stop, man, because you know the military is not, it's not, it's not good here in Africa. Yeah. You know, I mean, and you know they don't even run the race there anymore, right? Because yeah. you know it's in South America now because the uh, the military political situation is so bad. So I told him not to stop, and you know him being a Japanese guy, he stopped. And then boom, the rifles came out. And they told me to get out of the car because I spoke a little French then. You know, they spoke French over there in the western part of Africa. And, yeah, they hauled me. They took me away. <laughs> yeah, put me in this 
little dingy room, you know, clay room. I mean, yeah. it's something out of a movie. You yeah, know, yeah, no, I, yeah. This is not good. I can picture like a bad '80s movie. It's a, it was, yeah, it was Ill, some kind of ill-fitting military uniform. Yeah. Oh yeah. uh, no, they were the military uniforms would fit pretty good, man. <laughs> okay, yeah. Yeah, with yeah, a but, nine-year-old boy yeah. <laughs> <laughs> holding an assault rifle. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, though they were all adults. So, yeah. anyways, yeah. So he he held. You know, she told us our passports are fake and everything, and I go, "Oh my God, this is it! Yeah, I'm yeah. gonna die, die yeah. here, man," because he wouldn't let us go. And you know, finally, you know, he started talking about money. I go, "Oh, hey, uh, man, just go." Yeah, but we didn't have any money, so we go, "Hey, whatever you want in the truck, take it." And he took all our clothes, all that oh stuff. My God. Yeah, they took. It's a pretty poor country. So yeah, yeah. And then he let us go, and we just said, "We're out of here." Yeah. You know, next place we we, we stop where they we could buy like. <laughs> like shawls and you know and sheets you know we, yeah, yeah then, you went yeah. you went local we had to go local yeah, 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 yeah. is that yeah. Nomex uh, yeah. Nomex shawls no. yeah yeah no no yeah yeah no we don't we ditched our uh, our racing gear early because dude it's hot it's we're so there 14 hot. hours no one's out there checking yeah, yeah. Just, hey, let's go in so when you're and when you're driving forget the uh, you know almost get, you're getting yeah. getting basically robbed by, by the, the oh, local yeah, army robbed and killed yeah. are you are you um in the actual pace you're traveling are you driving as fast as possible all we're the time we're trying to, yeah but as carefully as possible because you know you get stuck once that's that could be two hours three hours until right. you're digging yourself out so yeah and another one is uh you know there's still landmines out there so fuck yeah so you have to make Land sure landmines let me tell you about something i don't want to find while i'm in a race <laughs> it's a landmine exactly landmine. <laughs> yeah so well actually that's how how one do of you the, avoid a landmine well you know that's how one of the guys died you know seriously yeah guy one of the big trucks you know those camions yeah the giant he, trucks yeah he ran over a landmine could get a seat could get a seatbelt out off in time and yeah he just a, a car burn truck burn wow so yeah, That's so you so have to crazy. yeah, so you have to you know watch out on landmines. So you want to kind of follow some of the tire tracks, right? That are yeah. in before you go where someone has already exactly yeah 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 yeah. yeah so. Fucking hell! I don't yeah. no, I'm not surprised they moved it. That good. Yeah, yeah, it's good. Yeah. <laughs> That's, That's so. A, but yeah, so, that, but the pace is pace as fast as you can go. So you know when you hit a good patch of hard dirt, you know, mm-hmm. and you're just and it, you know, you could get some good traction. Yeah, just you know, you just go, just make sure you're not like on the mountain's edge right, and you're right, going right. to go over. But yeah, and but then when you're, you're like, the if you're driving sand, through a town or something, are you expected to behave yourself? Oh, or? you got to, yeah, yeah, because you know what, some of those kids come out right, That's what I'm and, saying. and they'll start throwing rocks at you and stuff, and you you know you just got to be careful. And then you know, I mean. Uh, when you're out, you know we had some guy out there uh, sniping, you know, with a rifle shooting at, at you. Uh, or at, I, at, at well, I, car? I, I think at everyone, but for one, one for sure is one of the Mitsubishi drivers. Yeah, he had a bullet hole right behind him in the oh rear window. God. So I go, whoa. You almost got it. You almost bit it, man. That's you almost crazy. bought the farm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, would you were you doing that as a an experience or as a story? Yeah, or a what? story. Yeah, a story for road and track. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's, see, that's that's what the, the good thing is about the road and track business card, the attempted assassination notwithstanding. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, you know, the road and track <laughs> business card yeah. gets you in a Dakar. Yeah, give me another one. That was that was that was awesome. Well, well, what do you got? You got another highlight on the page. No, 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 this is on this man. <laughs> what did you, you brought? Prepared, notes. I'm, can, I'm I prepared wondering what you all my notes. notes. What and, is on and, the notes? Uh, notes is just something. If you're going to ask me about the book or something, oh. I want to make sure I get it out. Let's but. talk about the book, The Prototype by Sam Matani. I'll hold it up to that camera. Oh boy, thank you. Tell me, what's it about? Oh, I'm, blo- I'm I'm not doing a good job of showing the cover. It says it should never have existed, but now the world's fate depends on its survival. And presumably, we're talking Dude, about a car. You should, you, you should do those uh, yeah. movie trailers, man. Can't afford <laughs> Seth Rogen, <laughs> Matt Farah. <Yeah, man. laughs> <laughs> Tell me about it. What's it about? All right, so I'm um, sure you'll be shocked to learn that it's about a young automotive journalist. Okay, ah. all right, something right, I you know about. Yeah, exa- yeah. that's that's absolutely right. So he gets a mysterious invitation to a super exclusive sports car event which is something realistic no i have no idea what you're talking about that never happens yeah exactly right and then uh once there an attempt on his life is made and he eventually finds out that he's in the middle of a deadly conspiracy that involves the cia some nasty russian killers and all of them seem to want to want him dead all right in a word i would if you know i had like some uh agents people ask me you know give it to me in a word in a line what's the book about so i would say top gear meets jason Bourne. so Ah. if you think that you kind of got an idea what this book's about. Press launch gone bad. <laughs> <laughs> the press launch, yeah, when there's a death at a press launch, it's yeah, usually yeah. not a good thing, yeah. Cool, man, that's great. Yeah. So then that sets him off into an adventure where, you know, he kind of finds himself, you know, he's 
He's one of those young, you know, I think a lot of people, you know, just kind of talking to a lot of the younger people these days and just, you know, getting feedback. Some, you know, a lot of them are kind of, kind of lost. They, you know, they kind of want to find themselves, you mm-hmm. know, find their place in the world. And I kind of wanted to write a book, you know, for them. And, the, you know, and a lot of these guys are car enthusiasts too, you know, and they, you know, like you said, hey, should I be a journalism major? Should I, you yeah. know, so, so. No, there's people that really do want to, to really get into this job. Yeah. The, the number one question I get is like, how do I get your job? Right, right. I, I, I tell I tell them how I did it, but I go I, I you know, unless you're me, you can't you can't just well, you can't you should, drive through those tire tracks, my friend. You're gonna find landmines. Yeah, well, you should always have like a plan B back. or plan C because, like you, Matt, did you plan on being here? This no, no. See, no. I mean, you just you just never know what life throws at you. you know? Yeah, I know. I had three or four things I knew I didn't want to do, and as long as I avoided that, that's a pretty good open I, mindset. The easiest, man. the easiest, the the big avoidance was putting on a suit. I never wanted to put on a suit. I, my dad, mm. who is very powerful and successful and has managed tens of thousands of people, um, I always, you know, I, I love him very much and he's an amazing person, but I, I always saw his putting on of that suit and leaving the house at like 4 a.m. to beat traffic into Manhattan. Like every day? Every day. Yeah. And and I always thought as, as the, if I didn't put on the suit, I therefore wouldn't have to do that. It turns out my hours are just crazy. I just don't wear the suit. Yeah, well, you know? I mean, just, yeah, your yeah, clothes. Your clothes but, are the only thing different. But I'm glad I don't have to wear a suit. It worked out. Well, you'd have, you, do you wear one during auto shows? At least? No. No, you don't even do no. that? No. Okay. Well, we I, used to wear suits. You know what? Shows. I had to, I decided that um, as the president of Camp Get Fired Productions, mm-hmm. uh, the car can't tell if I'm wearing a fucking suit. No, I know the, the car. car. <laughs> yeah. I wear all. I'll dress cool for Pebble Beach. I like. I like the. I like the did fashion. You, did show. you just get back from? I didn't because I was okay. at this Grid Life thing in Atlanta. Which oh, is. Okay. Have you heard of this? No. So Grid Life is a motorsports and music festival. Mm-hmm. It's uh, they have like HPDE and Time Attack and drifting during the day, and then music and partying at night. Oh, that's and very people cool. camp oh. for the whole weekend and. Because there's uh, music, there's girls, mm. which is not something you see at your average track day, um, and it's really, it's really, really fun. It was at Road Atlanta. Oh, it was. And, awesome. uh, great track. Yeah. Awesome track. A lot of fun. And uh, I had a track hawk, the the Hellcat Jeep. I hate to say this, but it sounds a lot more fun than Pebble. So, well, <laughs> it was in its own way. I was a little jealous because it seemed like oh, people's wow, pictures is. from Pebble were super, super cool this year, and mm, there was yeah. a lot of nice stuff. But at the same time, it's sort of the same thing over and over. Exactly. It kind of is. Yeah, and uh, so you know, a 700 horsepower Grand Cherokee and Road Atlanta, sure. Yeah, why not? I don't want to do the. I don't want to talk too much about Trackhawk because I haven't written my story yet, and I don't want to scoop myself on this show. But let's just say. Um, I don't know if there's enough brakes in the world to haul down 5,400 pounds from 142 <laughs> miles an hour over and over. Yeah, it sounds like a recipe for death, but hey, you know, you're here, so. I'm, uh, it does I'm, sound like a recipe for death. You, you're here, A so lesser you driver it. might have found death. Yeah. The real que- the question of the weekend is, what happens when a uh, track hawk slides into a wall on its roof? That was going to be, because it turned 12 or it landed the big downhill high G. You really, that's you're a, really bouncing the inside there. That's a, that's a scary. That's a scary part of the track. Fifty four hundred pound car, yeah. and there was, um, you know, people got a little misty on Friday, and there was a couple, couple big whoopsies on the exit to twelve. A little red misty, you mean? Yeah. yeah. Someone, <laughs> someone got an am- incredible picture that I, I don't know where you're gonna find it, but someone got an amazing picture of a, a Corvette mid crash, just yard sailing. Uh-huh. All over the track, just parts and f- and fiberglass and carbon all that's, over the place. That's, that's the one. And the car was in the air. That's the one thing, uh, one problem about these things. You know, sometimes guys just kind of. He was fine. The guy was fine. Yeah, the car still, was toasted. Yeah. That was, he, look at go to the back to that picture, Tim. When you have a Jeep, you can take a really aggressive line through turn three. I have what a, curbing? I have zero <laughs> wheels on the track surface yeah, there. What curbing? <laughs> Yeah, you could have went right on the grass. Actually, I'll, to be I'm, and I'm not even to be perfectly honest. This is one of the more conservative uh, pictures. Yeah, play the little mm. video. Is, is the is the volume super loud? Here's here's my line through. Uh, <laughs> my line through yeah, there. You're way out. Way there. In, oh, yeah, yeah, way out. Yeah, yeah, hey. yeah, it's good. Yeah, just driving a straight line. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> you pretty much straight line the whole s's. But the uh, the brake brake fluid definitely got a little. A little hot. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot of weight. But, I was, you know, I'm jaded. Are you, do you feel like you're jaded? Like, are you able to appreciate a car that isn't extreme in some way? 
Yeah, you know, I'm jaded. I think in a lot of ways, but not in, not not in that way. Yeah, I can I can no. still yeah you find, appreciate you can find cars. the joy in an Accord. Yes, I can actually. Yeah, I do because you know, I've, yeah, I, I I can, I can. Yeah, I can. It, because you, you, obviously you can't. No, no, I think I I can sometimes, and other times I forget. I think that when I was driving the Trackhawk, and again, not to not to blow up my own spot too much, I think that having experienced some pretty fast um, sports and supercars earlier this summer, you know, even though this thing is incredibly fast for a Jeep. You know, a Corvette Grand Sport will house it. You know, so uh, but when I took other people out on it in it for rides, the sheer joy that others found mm. in this lumbering beast sailing over curbs and leaning and you know passing sixteen S two thousands on the back straight, mm. everyone else found that to be such a, a fun novelty that I thought maybe I was the one that was missing something, and everyone else saw what I didn't see. I think maybe they did. I think maybe yeah, they did because you know, I mean, it sounds fun what you just explained, even to me, it, it, who's been it in is, this thing for twenty, you know, who's doing this for twenty two years. If you, uh, if you aren't, if you don't know how bad those brakes were, <laughs> oh, <was laughs> the it? Well, passengers, okay. yeah, the passengers uh, had some ignorant bliss in some yeah, ways. Yeah, they didn't. Oh, okay, <laughs> they couldn't feel that pedal hitting probably, the floor. Yeah, they're probably going, "Wow, he didn't break through that <laughs> turn yeah, because he couldn't." <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> really uh, uh, slowed down with the entry uh, speed wow, there. Didn't that's you? awesome. <laughs> Great <laughs> technique. Really good driver. Trail breaking right in. Exactly. Huh? <laughs> Did you have the carbons? Uh, it does not have carbons. It, it does it? not. No, it doesn't. I the can't the see yellow that thing calipers. Carbon. No, yeah. but they're like fifteen point eight inch rotors. Oh, or so. mm. I think honestly, if I don't know if who makes a, a a track pad for this thing, but if you put some dot five fluid in a track pad, it would probably. I bet you'd get. So I would get like two laps and then have to do a cool down and then I could get one more and I'd have to do two cool downs and then yeah, I could get one. Yeah. Yeah, I bet if you did pads and fluid, you could probably get six, seven laps in a row out of it. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, it's silly. Yeah. Because, <laughs> you know, I've been on tracks where, you know, after two laps, the, the brake pedal goes straight to the floor Gone. and you're going, yeah, I got to get it. Yeah, yeah. I got to get going. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. But pads and fluid make a big difference, yeah. Yeah, it does. <laughs> are, you, uh, are you a fan of the modified cars? Do you get into that game much? Uh, it Do you study on which the tuner one. cars? Yeah, I don't study them, but yeah, I love them. Yeah, sure. You are like which ones? I don't know. I'm just I'm just curious as to, to what what no, kind my, of cars you gravitate to when not assigned things. Oh, when not assigned things? Yeah, like what are you you know what are you into? Yeah, you know, I kind I I like cars straight out of the factory. Believe it or not. So you know, if I were gonna go and get something right now, you know, give me a 911, give me a 911 Turbo. <sighs> yep. You know, or if I can afford it, you know, uh, give me a Ferrari. You know? Yeah, but. Uh, would, would I would I go and put some aftermarket stuff on that 911 Turbo? Probably not. No. But if I got let's say let's say a Z or something a uh -huh. little you know not as an older car, an older car, or, or not as expensive, you know you don't want to kind of mm -hmm. mess with some of these because I think they're you, know, you don't want to mess with perfection. But yeah, yeah, oh yeah, a Z. Yeah, I would probably you know see what I could do. I think you know? I think when you modify a car. It's a give and take, yeah. right? If you make it stiffer, you're gonna do something yeah. else, and yeah. every, everything has. There's no, you know, it's a it's a yeah. zero sum game yeah, or whatever. Yeah. So I think that with I think with a with a very high end car, you you yeah. definitely have to appreciate the level of development that went into some of that stuff. Exactly, but Especially older car like, like the NVH said. and all that. Yeah. But the older car, fuck it. Yeah, like uh, you give me an R33 Skyline, I I'm gonna, you know, I well, I'm not particularly fond of the R33. I'm R32 sort of and R34. Sort it's, of the unloved. It's kind Skyline. of the 996 Porsche. Of the <laughs> is it, you know what? Is it the Maxima steering wheel? That's where uh, that, that's where they lose me. It's, it's just, <laughs> it, you know, it's just. I think it's just not as pure as the R32 because you mm -hmm. know they try to muscle it up a little, and then mm -hmm. the R34 was just this they beautiful ma it. machine. So the R33 is yeah, but you give me an R33, which I think is still a great car. Yeah, I, I, I'm gonna. Uh, tweak the hell out of it. Yeah, yeah I will what's probably. A, tweak what's the in hell the Matani garage right now? You got anything going on? No, in the personal pretty, fleet? No, bo uh, boring stuff. I got my five BMW five series. Got yeah. an Audi Q five and a big uh, suburb uh, Tahoe. So yeah. So, so you, nothing. Nothing. You're, nothing well, you get your kicks from the the from the job. Well, that and you know, I always have my friends' cars and manufactured cars I could drive. So. The yeah, the when the press plus, cars. I don't have anywhere spoilers. to put them. I don't have anywhere to put them right now. You know, I'm, so. I'm going to solve that problem for you. Oh, okay. I'm building, a, I'm building a parking garage right there for collector cars. 
How much you can charge for a lot? Yeah, so there you go. <laughs> no, it people, cost me more than the car. <laughs> people probably. I hate. I have to. It, there's no choice about it. But uh, people, people, we can talk about it. We can talk about it. Hey, I just looked at your uh, wonderful poster here. I just the wanted, Senna poster. I just wanted to mention there is a nod, an homage to Ayrton Senna in the book. So Guru. I'm, I am a Senna fan, and that poster well, was hope given to are. me Why, by uh, yeah, Asif Kapadia, the director of the Senna film. Yeah, he was on yeah, the show, yeah. and uh, I love that movie. It was a great movie. I mean, the, yeah, you're not going to see. An My fiance like cried at Senna. That's how you know it's a good movie. Oh, uh, the movie? Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I, you know, it's for me. He's the one who kind of, you know, got me into Formula One racing mm -hmm. with him. Prost, you know, those battles. Yeah, that, and the, stuff. the 88, 87. I mean, even 89. since you know, from when he was at Tol I think it was Tolman. He Tolman. Went and got into, and then Lotus. Yeah, but uh, you know. Um, it's a little still hard for me to watch a documentary and, send, and then, you know, see the part where, you know, the last part of his life. Yeah, where, yeah. You know, the crash and the funeral and stuff. The and I, I just was crazy. Yeah, I, I know. Well, the, uh, he was, I mean, yeah. he was Brazil, right? Yeah. So, uh, you know, I that's where I turn it off. You know, I'll, I'll yeah. watch it up until maybe he, w once he puts <laughs> on the Williams, yeah, uh, yeah. Williams the Williams oh, uh, it, race huh? suit, uh, I'll probably turn it off. Yeah. You start seeing the active suspension go up and down no, and you go, that's no, not going to land. No, that's oh, not, man. yeah, that's, yeah, turn it off, yeah. So, yeah. I understand. That's yeah, sad. Yeah, it is sad. There's so. a documentary right now on, um, they're showing it on Delta flights, actually. It's called, like, uh, Ferrari Race to the Afterlife or something like that. It's about all the for all the drivers that died oh. driving for Enzo Ferrari from like fifty eight well, to sixty nine. You know, it wasn't just Ferrari. It was uh, it, it was, was everybody. Everyone, but it, know, it's, it focuses days. on the sort of attitude of Enzo Ferrari at the time, which is sort of well, you're, him and probably you, Colin you're Chapman gonna, too. You yeah, know, you're going to be immortal yeah. one way or another. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Um, guys, if you want to ask us uh, some car questions, get in on the Super Chat now, because we're going to get to that in just a second for the live listeners. Thank you. Um, if you, uh, if I gave you $100,000, what are you buying other than a 911 Turbo? I can't buy it. That's $180,000 now. All right. So for 100 what are you getting? $100,000? Yeah. I can't even buy a 911 with that, can I? <laughs> Not a brand new one. Yeah. No. I just had the Courier oh, T buy... a couple uh, weeks ago. It was really nice. Oh, you, you did? You seen that thing? Yeah. That's kind of like lightweighty. Yeah. Uh, it, base. You it like it? Fun. Really, really fun. Very nice to yeah. drive. What would you buy? For 100 Yeah, 100 That's Ooh, a tough question. It's a tough number, actually. It is a now tough that number. I threw it out there, I realize it is actually a tough number. If I could get a, into a Carrera for that, well, I, I would, would too, but, but you can't. I don't know if you can. Um. Ooh, maybe like an M2 competition. I like the M2. Mm. I had a, I had a good time with the M2. You know, I'm older than you, and I'm kind of you know I kind of like the luxuries of life these days. So oh, I might get yeah. something like an M uh, a six series or uh. something because you know I have my five series. I love it now. So I'm only 36, but, but my spine identifies as a 75. <laughs> I'm, that's that's, I'm, that's I'm double your age, man. I know. I've, I've had two back surgeries. I'm I'm a disaster. Really? Yeah, From yeah. Did you play um, sports? I did Baja, and oh, when I was 21, I and the compressions of it. I mean, I already had. It, How many times did you do Baja? See, I oh, did it once. Oh, I only did it one, but I but the compressions of it, and then I did. I think I did some other like furniture moving into an apartment afterwards, and the combination of the two just put me in the hospital, and I had surgery, and then I heard it again after oh. uh, driving a Lotus across the country. Uh, a Lotus what? Not a lease. An Exige. S260. Oh, an Exige. Oh, <sighs> yeah. Okay, those are Yuck. cramped. Yeah. yeah, it was so small. Yeah. And um, so hospital again. But and So oh, now I'm a little man. sensitive to oh, it. Okay. So I'm, dri I'm driving my first Lexus ES in 20 years right now. Well, it's a lot sportier than the last one. Dude, it's an F Sport. It's like know, that it's... bright ass blue color. I saw the interior. It's With the red. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty <laughs> racist. Really, it's really not, aggressive. This is not your soccer mom's ES anymore. Dude, it's no, so it's not. aggressive. Yeah. <laughs> They dropped it off this morning. I was like, "What is going on?" You know, with it's this on thing? that new platform, so it's a, it's a nice it's a nice car. Well, I've only driven it. There it is, the blue. Yeah, that nice that car. one, the super bright blue. Yeah, nice Sorry, car. Motor Trend, stealing your pictures. But man, so a friend of mine had it looks like a press shot anyway. So you, it you is. Did. I think it is. Yeah. Literally, I was in high school the last time I drove an ES. So this is. Yeah. Uh, although it looks like if you covered the nose and the very tail lights, it could almost be any car. Um, but it's nice, man. Yeah, it's nice a, to they, drive. They really did a good job on that. Well, it's good. Yeah, they got the new uh, platform, the chassis in yeah. it, where you're sitting lower. It's more of a driver's car. So yeah, yeah the driving position job. is like really, really nice and well laid out. Yeah. And what actually I've I've actually noticed just I've only driven it about ten miles, honestly. But I noticed mm -hmm. immediately it doesn't have a turbo motor. It's just a regular six, and so. 
I haven't driven just a V6 car in a minute. I've all been doing all these puny turbo motors. Well, that's because and that's so, trend, right? Yeah. So you, yeah, you know so that dead efficiency. zone at the bottom of the th- at the beginning of the throttle isn't there, and I'm like, wow, this thing is so responsive. Naturally nice. aspirated is good. Yeah. <laughs> it actually, I think in the in the real world, naturally aspirated actually works better than the turbo motors. Uh, well, yeah. Well, some of these guys they man- engineer their turbos so good that you don't feel the lag, right? But yeah, yeah. yeah but you know what? Yeah. I mean, even my BMW, it's there's lag. You but know, the entry level cars. They're all laggy. Yeah, they're either, they're either laggy or they just die at forty eight hundred RPM. Yeah, it's yeah. hard either to find one, a balance. Yeah, just, it, yeah, it just hits a hits the roof. Yeah, yeah. Porsche with so. the variable turbine geometry kind of figured it out. Theirs right. is pretty good, and BMWs kind of they got it pretty good with their bigger turbo motors. I right, think right that B B thirty eight. What's the new one in the, in the, in the four series? B th- something. Which one? Oh, the the. Yeah, in the 340 Dude, and the 440. I'm not a journalist anymore. You should, you should know this stuff, man. BMW engine codes always <laughs> get me. It's like a B30 or something, I think. Whatever the new four, the 440 motor is. Isn't somebody I think doing an uh, electric spool now I can't. to get it going? Oh, the electric turbo they were yeah. talking about? Yeah. Th- I think, Who's doing that? I don't that? know if that's out there yet. I, oh, really? Yeah, well, well, I'm that? sure someone will. Some, oh, yeah, someone I think that BMW motor is one that's going to be part of the Super too. Yes, it is. Yeah, so. And my house in right. Venice, I'm I'm right on the BMW like fuel economy driving route. So the camo cars, oh, you like, see him go yeah, through? like oh, every day cool. at like four thirty. Just take some like shots. The Z5. And yeah. I, you know, I, I got some shots, but I I don't mm. I don't think anyone cares anymore. Yeah. The Cullinan they're driving by the Rolls Royce and the uh, and the the, Z, the Z5. Oh, so the Rolls uh, BMW family. Driving yeah, the by whole yeah, home. it's like oh, minis okay. and yeah, they're all here. I think they just revealed the um, the new. Are they calling it Z4 or Z5? Z4. I think it's four. It's I four. Think it's four. That's can what I. Can you get a picture yeah. of the 2019 yeah. Z4? It's. Uh, what do you think about this thing, dude? Oh no, I I love it. The, the one they you just like showed this? at Pebble, right? Yeah, 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 here yeah, it is. yeah, yeah. I think it actually yeah, looks like awesome. the. It looks like the Mercedes SL, and I'm not saying that in a good mm. way. I think mm. it's got some Fiat 124 that's a good nose it, and. But there's a. Give us a better picture. Yeah. Doesn't that look like a it, smashed are you Mercedes? Sure this is it? it. There was a, yeah, really. Oh, yeah, okay. this is it. This is, these are the BMW press photos. Oh, okay. Yeah, they it's, look better in the. I see a lot. They look better, better on my phone. <laughs> I didn't see. <laughs> Small, I didn't see them smaller and further <laughs> away. <laughs> oh wait, go my... here, Tim. There's one from Pebble Beach. There's that's it on the. I think it, it looks, looks good. It looks all right there, doesn't it? That, I, 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 I agree. See, this I looks the better Mercedes. than the other pictures. Yeah, I see a lot of elements of other cars. I see Fiat 124 headlights. I see the side profile of Mercedes SL. I see some other things happening. I see a Kia grill because the the BMW kidneys are now yeah, kind of touching each you other. Know, now like that a, you say it, I'm not. Yeah, can't I, I, see I, the I, shit, Sam? I, I, yeah, I, I got to see it in the. I got to see it in the flesh. <laughs> it's better looking than final. the Supra. Supra doesn't look very good. I think it looks weird. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just think it's strange looking. And plus, you know, I don't think Supra should be a four cylinder turbo engine. You know. I, I think a Supra should be a V6. I, or an inline or six. Or an inline, inline six. six. Or an inline well, six. Someone, one of the Toyota guys I, I won't already. Even, uh, I, I would love to see an inline six, but to be realistic, you know. The, yeah, Wait, that's, are you that's telling a, me there's not going to be a I BMW don't know. inline six option for this car? I don't know. It's I all four cylinders? I, I haven't heard anything. Have you? Uh, the, I don't know. I don't know either. I don't so. know. But, uh, you know, uh, if, if it's a four-cylinder car, to me, that that's, would be disappointing. That's, well, that would be a Celica, wouldn't it? Yes, yeah, it would. So it and someone, really at, someone at Toyota was already talking about how to swap, that it was that they made it to Jay-Z swap-friendly, which I think is very sad. Oh, really? Yeah, mm. imagine having to backdate your engine by 20 years. It would be 20 years, wouldn't it? <laughs> it's yeah. 98. It's like yeah. crazy. That would be, that'd be a little sad. 20-year <laughs> backdate on <laughs> yeah. your motor to get the good engine? That'd be so dumb. Let's go yeah. to some super chat. Let's, let's, uh, the, let's get the fans involved while we finish this one up. All right, here we go. Uh, uh, what is our opinion of the Volvo C30? Good daily for Wisconsin, curvy back roads and highway. I think Volvo, their cars are looking really good lately. I mean, I really do. You know, uh, you don't. I could see your biting your I like tongue. The v, I like the V90. And I think it's the V90. But I like yeah. the, v, the C30 and, yeah. I drove, I, I think I, I wanted to like it so bad. I drove the base car and then I drove the Polestar. Really? Oh, okay, but I, you know, I've, I've had a Volvo before, but that was before, you know, uh, the Chinese took it over. Right. But, but yeah, I you know, I think 
That's like that's a weird concept card mm, yeah, picture. That's, yeah, that's my uh, my fiance has a V sixty uh, with the pole star design with the pole star tune right now. Oh, and she it's, does. She does, and it's nice. Why are you so anti Volvo? Because weird shit happens with it all the time. Well, Electronic I'm just stuff. going by how it looks. Right? Oh yeah, okay. I haven't driven one for like oh the C thirty. I remember the C thirty. Well, not the C thirty, but being, you know, just some of the other Volvo. The C thirty was rubbery. It was, I remember everything being rubbery. So if that's what you want, an isolated kind of cushioned experience that is what you're going to get with that car i think what you see is what you get uh next to me 2017 mustang gt perform oh mustang versus camaro you know dude i mean we get a lot of mustang versus camaro things They're popular cars it's it's to me the mustang is a better place to spend your time and the camaro goes a little faster those are th that's typically how i see those two yeah, I'm okay with that. You okay I, with that I, assessment? I'm okay with that. Yeah. yeah, I mean, uh, com whether or not you right, like what, a Camaro. Wait, wait, all right. Mm. So, but what would you buy? Mustang. I don't fit. In a, a Camaros are very uncomfortable for me because they, the seating position combined with the low roof line isn't good for me. I think you know I, I would just maybe buy the Camaro just based on because it, uh, I like the design a little better. But fair. Maybe that's it. You know. I mean. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, Mustang versus Camaro is a is a common question, and yeah. it's personal preference. A either of them could beat the other one around a racetrack on any given day, depending on driver. Uh, Tommy L. Oh, thank you for the, your donation, sir. What is the next YouTube? Oh, man. I'm just getting into it and spend so much time creating content. Am I wasting my time? This is a tough one. Like, what is the next YouTube? Like, I think basically he's just saying. What is the next? I don't, I don't even like, understand so we, the you know, question. Well, we're content creators on YouTube. Right. And, you know, YouTube is paying less and expecting more. And uh, it was it's pretty predictable that they would have done that because you, you can't ask YouTube mm -hmm. for a raise. So what's the next thing he's saying? I think I think some people are getting involved with this Instagram TV thing, but you have to shoot it on your phone. Uh, people are using Twitch. Um, I, I unfortunately, as long as YouTube and Google are integrated so well into the fabric of global society, I don't see a YouTube competitor anytime soon. That's the unfortunate truth. Um, I, but spending in so much time creating content and thinking you're wasting your time. I've definitely been there. <laughs> I've, definitely, uh, yeah. I've been there. I, you know, you have to love making the content. I think to push through that stuff, right? You got to love the cars and yeah. The well, creating. you know, I help uh, once in a while with uh, GT Channel, right? Taro's yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah, YouTube seems like it's the only game in town. You know, especially with it all those uh, partners and all that. It is. I have. I have. I get called into meetings at least once or twice a year that are someone trying to create the next video platform right. generally well-meaning generally agreeing that that youtube is not sharing revenue properly with content creators but their strategy every single one of them is to take people like me and other content creators and have us lure our audiences off of youtube mm -hmm. which will never ever happen ever Getting anyone to follow you on another platform that they're not already following you on is is futile. Mm -hmm. um, Micah wants to know, trying to decide on the next fun a weekend or an occasional track car. Should he get a Cayman, a, a, a Z06, C6, C6, or a C7 Stingray, TTRS, living, live in Washington State, may drive in bad weather? I would – oh, me driving bad weather. Might be driving in bad weather Is in Washington State. Is that on the State. track or uh, on the way to the track? <laughs> I, think, I think it's uh, – I think it's a it's a car that can handle its own. That won't be scary if it gets wet or cold. I think all of those cars can not be scary if it gets wet or cold as long as you have the right tires. Yeah. Well, that's with almost any car in it. But out of those, I – C6, Z06 – C six zero six is going to be your best car. track car, but I'm the Cayman the S might be the f most fun. You know, I I'll mean, tell you what, the, the, for, short, the Corvette you got it. You you need to you got to really work, work a little. You got to work a little bit on yeah, that car yeah. because yeah, because I think it gets I'll tell a you what, squirrely. I'm gonna throw my hat in for the TTRS. TTRS is are fast. That is, yeah, that, they're, that's, they're it's a nice really car. fast, and they're like little, they're like uh, little rally cars, like little WRC cars. And but it, if you say Audi or Porsche, I, I got to go with the Porsche. I know, you the, know? the problem with the TTRS is the Cayman S, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, well, that's true, isn't it? But uh, here's the and difference. The, there's a Cayman S there. I in know. That list. Here's so. the difference, though. I'm going to assume he doesn't mean a 718, and he mean, means a naturally aspirated car, which is a lovely car, but. The TTRS with like four parts can make a reliable 600 horsepower. 
Is it TTRS rear wheel drive? It's all wheel it's drive all wheel with drive, the right? five cylinder and the turbo and the well, Haldex. Well, if you have all wheel drive, you could probably you know uh, keep your tires. Yeah, from you can. Going, uh, uh, you know, go from wasting away. But I drove APRs, TTRS. Yeah, but you know it what? That so thing's, fast. That thing's going to push through some of those tight corners. <laughs> I would take the Cayman. I, I Fair. The Cayman. <laughs> what car, Wes wants to know, would you use to set the fastest lap on a quiet day at Laguna Seca? Even the Evora 400. What do you mean? What do you mean? Quiet, a quiet day. day. A day like when no, not a race, not a race car. A day when they have sound limits. So yeah, Laguna so Seca's got car. the 96. So a, a fast, the fastest car that will pass Laguna Seca's sound limits. Um, most of the new turbocharged 911s in quiet exhaust mode will pass. So I would say that could be one. Yeah. Uh, what a, G, a GT3 probably won't. A GT3 happen. won't, but a turbo yeah. will. A 911. Mm. Tur- I would take a 911 turbo. Or turbo, turbo S with exhaust kind of a heavy car, but yeah, it's. Can you think of something faster that's quieter? That's an interesting question. It's got to be faster, faster, and also quieter than well, none of those, Turbo none S. Of those, none of those crazy no. Ferraris, like a no Ferrari, La will, Ferrari, a La Ferrari won't pass. An Enzo, <laughs> no, Damn, not a really? chance. Not the chance. production cars, man. <laughs> not a chance. Nothing naturally aspirated and fast will pass sound. Oh, really? Quiet it has to be type. Nah, turbo. I mean, it, yeah, because the turbo is really quiet. Those, mm. I would say, nine eleven turbo is is significantly quieter. Uh, is quiet enough to do it. Okay. Not um, so relevant today, but Tesla Roadster in a couple years. You in, think in a couple a years, track? maybe. Yeah. Yeah, Didn't maybe. someone just? Oh, I think uh, was it Jag? Yeah, I know had it on. Well, no, yeah, they, he did. But um, I think Jaguar just went out with the I Pace and ran a one forty eight at Laguna and wow. beat that dude. The, wow. There's a Model Three owner who ran like a fifty or a fifty one. And Jaguar just went out with an eye pace and ran a 48. So we may see some electric production car. Take Laguna. you on with your Jeep over there. Fu- <laughs> I, ooh, a f- the Jeep. I bet the Jeep at Laguna. Would the Jeep run faster than a 48? Uh, I don't know. Wow. Well, you know, Laguna's so pretty heavy. tough on the on the brakes there, Tough too. on brakes and, so, and, not, and doesn't have a big enough straightaway. It just Although, has that I'll tell front you what, straightaway. That back no. straightaway is always curving. Here's you know? where you'll make it up. The, the torque up the big hill. From five to the corkscrew. The Jeep will motor up that hill. That's where you'll that's where you'll get it back. But I uh, <laughs> Ron says my first my first and favorite BMW is the E thirty nine. Why do they get so little love from enthusiasts? That's like one of those Reddit baiting questions because the answer is they get a ton of love from enthusiasts. Everyone yeah, loves man. the E thirty nine M five, right? They're worth they're worth money. They I think good. so. Yeah, I yeah. like them. So manual V eight. Yeah, I, I like think they them. get a ton of love. The one just sold. Uh, like a, didn't a mint one just sell? I think e, EAG might have had an enthusiast auto group. They have like the nicest but the highest priced used BMWs around. Their founder is coming on the show tomorrow. 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 Yeah. Um, but uh, E39s are dope. Um, Travis says, looking to improve as a driver. Would you recommend that I track my daily driver, get track day insurance? Any other advice? How about go to... Raising school, you can do that. Yeah, if you've got, they are exp- expensive. They're expensive. If you have some disposable income, you yeah. can go to racing school and drive someone else's race cars. Right. That's a. I always recommend other people's race cars. Me too. Whenever possible. Another way is maybe you know just join some autocrosses. Autocross. Just get some you know just get some mm-hmm. get, get get some time in where you could throw the car around and get learn car control. What auto, auto autocross control? tells you how to listen to your tires. Right? Yeah, listen to your tires. I mean, I hate autocross. <laughs> I know. Personally, I, I hate them. I know. But I mean, feel. but if you're gonna if you're gonna learn, you know, it's not a it's not a bad first step. Another one is uh, a go kart. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, if you want to invest a little bit, and I mean, the tires you'll have to go through, but a go kart will teach you so much. Especially some of those shifter carts go over 100 miles an hour. So, dude, shifter carts are crazy. so crazy and yeah, fun. So, yeah, yeah. So. But on a basic level, like, yes, you can go to a track day in mm-hmm. your track Mustang awesome. GT. Yeah. Um, I if you're worried about the insurance, I definitely do recommend it. It's not that expensive compared mm-hmm. to writing your car off. For example, just as uh, just at Grid Life um, Friday at Road Atlanta. Dude had a brand new Viper TA, paper tags on it, lap one, sailed it oh, off into the tire wall, God. and he had tire insurance, he had track insurance, and the whole car is covered. Oh, he just God. said goodbye yeah. and go and go, and go get himself a new Viper. Mm-hmm. Covered. Matt, there is a scene like that in the prototype where someone's <laughs> driving yeah. on a racetrack. Paul Ricard, 
Good circuit. Good circuit. I like the stripes. Yep. Oh, beautiful stripes, aren't they? Yeah. Tim, yeah, get so. an image of the Paul Ricard circuit because it's one of the coolest looking. The emergency. Yeah. The runoff there is just this crazy. Uh, what is it? Rubbery substance it's that like slows high, your car down. It's a high friction, high friction yeah, grip. So awesome. if you like spin off, yeah. Look yeah, there at it is. Look at blue the blue. And yeah, that's it. Not yeah. That or can you zoom in? Get a go, get a better zoom. Go uh, to that right one. One one more right. Yeah, 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 see? Yeah. So uh, so if you go off track there, that the alternating blue and black is... That's the gravel. Is, yeah, that's instead pretty much of the gravel. gravel. Yeah, yeah. So. Which is better because you can get out of it. Yeah. <laughs> You're not stuck. So there's a very key scene that happens at this racetrack cool. in the book. So. Have you ever driven Paul Ricard? Yes, of course. Yeah. I haven't. Where, is it amazing? Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, it's awesome. It's very high tech. I mean, you could just tell by the runoff, right? But is it designed by the same uh, the same the guy the guy who's done every it's Formula, Formula One Formula track? One tra yeah, yeah, probably. Yeah, and you know, I uh, I don't know if Toyota still owns it, but I drove it when Toyota owned it mm -hmm. back then, and yeah, it was really high tech. And it was at a point when the there was no f Grand Prix there, because uh, you know French Grand Prix yeah, was yeah, there, yeah. then they stopped doing it, and then recently they went back. So yeah, do you appreciate those stripes from the track? Like I when can't you're really driving, see him. No, uh, well, like, no, because you're kind of concentrate on you know on your lines. So. Looks good from drones, though. Yeah, it does. Isn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. How, but, does, uh, how does it work as runoff? So the blue it slows you down. It just yeah. Yeah, the blue different is textures. like a something oh, that's major that's uh, more friction than normal asphalt. Mm -hmm. Yeah, something you wouldn't want to drive on. I but think if it's softer is, because I did not. Uh, I didn't get on go on it. Thankfully, <laughs> you're not supposed <laughs> yeah, to. You're not <laughs> supposed to. But yeah, <laughs> but I went and touched, and I go, whoa, this stuff is crazy. Yeah, so. Like sport court kind of, right? Kind of, yeah. yeah. yeah, it's, yeah it's some weird rubber, rub, asphalt with a lot more rubber yeah. in it, maybe. You don't have to clean your yeah. car afterwards. No, I Oh, always, yeah, that's it. Yeah. That's right. I was I was listening to someone uh, about, talk about the design of racetracks, and I found that the amount of rubber in the asphalt was so it's so high in the racetrack compared to, like, a street. Oh, yeah, that's it's probably for so better, much for, for yeah. grip, yeah. Yeah, for better grip. And for, what yeah. else have you got the Timmy's? Uh, should I trade... Let's see. Logan says, should I trade in my beautiful 2004 Jag XK8 for a 2010 BMW 330? Uh, okay. Um, well, sh uh, 2004 <laughs> Jag XK8 um, is not going for, to appreciate any time. Yeah, I know. I would. <laughs> you would? I don't know if I would. I mean, I'm not a big 3 Series fan from 2010, so... Yeah, I mean, if it's a new one, you know, maybe. 20,000 miles is pretty low. Oh, is it 20,000 miles? 20, oh, miles? 20,000 yeah. miles and a manual for 2010? an XK8? Yeah, I, yeah would, maybe. I would trade. Yeah, because then you still have you have all your Bluetooth and everything yeah. now. You don't have it back. 04 to 10 is a big jump in technology. Yeah, that's true. Ryan wants to know, do I still plan to get a GT350R? Uh, if not, what changed your mind from the one take you did two years ago? I wanted to get a GT350R, and nobody would sell me one at sticker. Even I offered to promote anything for anybody if they would sell me one at sticker. Nobody wanted it. Wow. Um, do I plan to get one? No, because I needed a car then. <laughs> and I don't, you don't need, need a, a car, car now. now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, the entire process uh, turned me off to it. But it's a lovely car, and they just had one, a bunch of them at uh, Grid Life running around. And every time I'm standing on the side of the racetrack and the GT350R goes by at 8,000 RPM, yeah. I do crack a smile. Yeah. Yeah. Fucking great car. Not that I, nothing wrong with the car. Would love it, but no room in the garage. Don't need a car, etc. Carlos says just got a new job doing accounting consulting. That's forty to fifty percent travel. Any tips with dealing with lots of travel for work? Sam, you've what been you in mean, that world. What do you mean, be travel like plane travel? Yeah, how to, how to deal with well, being in time uh, yeah. zones and well, living on airplanes? I'm a million miler on two airlines. Oh, you are. So yeah, so I had I've done a they lot of travel. They treat you good. What do you get when you get a million miles? You get something uh, cool? Let's see. I get a lifetime gold membership, and my wife gets lifetime gold membership. That's awesome. You don't, have, so you don't have to make it no, every year? No, I just get Sick. Off. And then Delta, they just gave us you know, uh, a little gift. And you still have to make status every year? Yeah. Fuck uh, them. I know. I that, want that Delta, too. Fuck that them. was very upsetting, so <laughs> very disappointing. But, uh, what, yeah, a lot of travel. Yeah, you know, you just, you just, uh, just remember every time you go – Let's see, east. So it, if, yeah. if it's me, me from here going to Europe or coming back from Japan, yeah. that way you're going to get some major uh, jet lag. Yeah. Going the other way, you're going to be okay. Uh, and, and, you know, and when you could take naps, take naps. Uh, try to stay outside, get a lot of sunlight, drink a lot of liquids. And, yeah. you know, jet lag is jet lag. So Water, comfortable shoes. 
Um, well, if you're on the plane, yeah. yeah if you're on the no. plane, yeah, you want to. And you know what? I get cold really easily. You know, yeah. you guys, you Caucasians with your Nordic thing, you, guys, you Caucasians. I'm, that's I'm racist. Crazy. I know, but I, sir, dude, I get, I am freezing in that thing. So I, I, yeah. to, I, I always wear a long sleeve shirt. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, and some t-shirt hoodie. Mask. I have a t-shirt hoodie. Yeah. <laughs> no, for me, like, okay, the things I deal with travel are. I drink tons of water. Yeah, you drink tons of water. That's I have a my, I have a travel outfit that's either sweatpants or mesh shorts and a t-shirt hoodie. Um, I, I I have comfortable shoes. I I pack like really efficiently. I move through security like really fucking fast. TSA pre-check and global entry must have. Yeah. I try to de- I try to I try to get uh, uh one, I try to stick with one airline and then get a really good credit card that works with that airline, get lots of miles, get lots of free stuff. That's 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 a great great point. Yep. Yeah. And I have to learn how to be a better phone partner to my fiance. That's, that's Yeah, the that's other yeah, one. that's another one. Yeah, yeah. But otherwise, yeah, just for comfort try to, you know, sleep on the plane. Yeah. A little bit, you know, you're going to be dehydrated right on a plane yeah so. drink drink more water yeah, drink water and yeah so good luck carlos uh matthias wants to know should i get an eighty thousand mile peugeot 205 gti as a first car for four thousand u.s dollars i don't need a car to commute so it's only for fun from argentina wow matthias eighty thousand mile peugeot 205 gti for four thousand dollars assuming it looks like an eighty thousand mile car i think is a great buy uh, Peugeot is a great to drive. I, yeah. I, I mean, every Peugeot I've ever driven, I love to drive. I mean, really? they're really, yeah, they're kind of a driver's car. It was, you know, I'm, I'm a little upset they would really stopped marketing them here. But, dude, eighty thousand miles is a lot of, lot is that of miles a lot on of a, Peugeot miles, a lot of miles on a French car, man. <laughs> <laughs> So, I mean, I'm just leave it there, right? I don't I want to get in any more trouble than I have I don't now. Know, yeah, I don't know. I I'm have no high mile French car experience. So a lot of miles on a French car. Four thousand dollars is not that much money, though. I you don't know, know how long four thousand dollars goes in Argentina yeah. or here or wherever, but I, it's it could be two thousand bucks. It's still a lot of miles <laughs> on a French car. Man. All I know about a 205 GTI is that my friend Chris Harris, who is a who is a real real driver's driver, has one and really likes it a lot. And so, oh yeah, it's it, it is. It, they're all great driving cars. I would I mean, say, if assuming the this specific example that this person's looking at it checks out and is not a piece of crap, that sounds like a pretty good price to me. It's a lot of miles. <laughs> oh on man, car. Sam is Sam is <laughs> not <laughs> feeling that French kiss. Well, I've had some bad experiences with Have French you? cars. With well, French yeah, cars? new ones too. You know, they're stuff for. Uh, I, I, buy, I I'm I'm not I'm no, this that, was a long percent. This was a long time ago. So I I've had, they're a lot better now probably. I I've had I've had more bad experiences personally with six figure German luxury sedans than with almost any other type of vehicle really? ever. Typically not mine, my father's. He's been driving, you know, S class and A eight right, really? and whatever for last bit. And he had a seven fifty. Wait, when is this though? So he had a two thousand one S class that okay. was a complete piece of shit. Okay. He had a two thousand ten seven fifty that was a complete piece of shit. Wow. And then he had a twenty fourteen A eight that was great, but that he put a lot of miles on and things started falling apart. Mm, yeah. Okay. Whatever. Well, I, he might have had better luck with a Lexus. <laughs> he, we are yeah. yes. He he might, had yeah. he would have and he probably will in the future. I'm a, I'm a big Lexus fan. Yeah, that's great. So am I. Well, I have to. My uh, a little. Um, um, I have to admit that. Yeah, Lexus is one of my uh, clients I work with right oh, now. Yeah. So I can't really full disclosure. Know, yeah, full disclosure. You're yeah, but, to, it's okay. But You're even if to like I was Lexus. yeah, I, disclaimer I Lexus, accepted. I, I I think Lexus. Yeah, they make they make pretty durable cars. Very. very I have durable. an LS four hundred with nine hundred eighty eight thousand miles on it. No, you don't. For, yeah, I do. Nine hundred and eighty-eight thousand. Mm-hmm. I bought it with eight ninety-seven in twenty fourteen, and I'm passing it around to other like automotive journalists and friends and shit. I mean, that's going to be a million mile car. Hell yeah! Unless the engine blows up, it's because the original motor never been opened. If the engine blows up, here, there's a good picture of it running a toll in New York. <laughs> if the it's if the engine blows up, the game is over. <laughs> is that, they're telling you to pay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It was easy to find. <laughs> um, right now, it's with some uh, some lovely Bulgarian. Uh, see their Instagram is their Adventure Holics. Yeah, wow. Follow them, Bulgarian adventure bloggers who have the Lexus. There it is. Somewhere in the desert, they're doing fifteen thousand miles in the car. Wow, Isn't that awesome? that's amazing. That's gonna yeah. go straight to the Toyota Museum. I hope they couldn't care less. No, oh, they come. I on. mean, they they weren't like mean about it, but they, I said, you know, I've got this car and it's it's going to have a million miles on it. And they said, congratulations, it's doing exactly what it's supposed Who to. Who did do. you talk to? I don't know. Somebody. Mm, maybe they I'll gave could... me some brake pads. 
<laughs> that was that was better, their gift. Better than nothing, I guess. And then they moved to Texas. So yeah, they're so I, now. Uh, no. Have you been down there yet? Yeah, I've been there. A couple the times. Texas one. Yeah, yeah, is it is? I love the museum they had here. And uh... oh no, I didn't go to the museum. Oh, okay. was, they were just clearing the space for the museum when I was there. So, Did you yeah. ever go to the Torrance Museum? Oh uh, yeah, once. Yeah, it was awesome. Yeah, the, it's the, awesome. It's yeah. so funny because there's just like a row of Corollas. And you yeah, you walk go, into a museum yeah, and you yeah. go, what am I even yeah. looking at here? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So. Well, Sam, thanks for coming in, man. I you appreciate it, your man. time. The book is called The Prototype. Um, right. wait, hold it up. Uh, Thank oh, you. Other camera. camera. Other camera. Uh, camera one. Back to you. Camera two. Where available. is it available? Where, where can we buy it? Uh, Amazon and Barnes and Noble and all those places. All those but places. Amazon, yeah, Amazon probably be your best bet, right? I yeah. am. Uh, I'm going to keep this. Yeah, you can keep and it. And I'm going to read it. Thank you. Read and uh, why don't you and why don't you sign it and I then will. I'll give it after I read it I'll give it away to a fan. I'm That'd sure. Be good. So I'll just put my name in. Here? Yeah. Right. Just write two blank and then I'll I'll write the I'll fan's name. name. In there I'll just you put go. my name in there. Thanks for coming in, man. I you appreciate it. Do you want to plug anything else besides the book? No, anything that's else? it, man. Thank All you right. very much. The it prototype, Sam Matani, legendary automotive journalist. Thank you, live folks. Appreciate you and uh, all of your super chat questions. Uh, we've got another show tomorrow. I don't remember what time the show is tomorrow. Noon, I it is? think so. Noon Pacific? I believe so, yeah. All right. Tomorrow, noon Pacific. Come back and join us. And uh, the Smoking Tire Podcast is powered by Shout Engine. Get your own damn podcast at shoutengine.com. It's easy. All you need is a microphone, an internet connection, and hopefully something to say. And now that I look at my schedule, yes, Eric Keller, the owner of Enthusiast Auto Group, the uh, the BMW, uh, the folks that everyone loves to hate, will be in studio tomorrow at noon Pacific. Thanks, folks. See you later. Good day. <laughs>